I hope you're enjoying my dad's videos. Make sure to share this video with your family and friends, like and subscribe and turn on post notifications so you get notified for all my dad's new videos. My social media will be tagged down below so you can follow it. And just remember, Jesus loves you. Hi guys, uh, just to let you know, we've got a new, brand new website, uh, drcharlieward.com, where all our videos will be loaded over the next few weeks. And you'll be able to view all of those um, without, there's no charge for watching any of those. We've moved them all onto our own platform because all the doctor ones, which are very, very important, um, have been taken down. But it's, so we've now got control over those, but every single video we post will be free to watch. That's very important for you to know. The other thing is, is we're getting a lot of, an awful lot of people asking us about gold and silver. And I've always been an advocate of gold and silver. And um, myself, I'm not in a position to give financial advice. I'm not qualified to do so. I'm just going to tell you what I've personally done. I've personally bought gold and silver, and I've used a company that uh, I trust, um, which is shown below here. Um, they've always looked after me well. And if you order from them uh, more than £250 worth, um, you get a free one ounce silver coin, which is very, very nice. It's a nice little nice little gift. But uh, this is not an endorsement. This is just what I have done personally. And it's up to you. It's your choice. As I said, I'm not qualified to give the advice, uh, financial advice, but it's just what I have done personally. And I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you enjoy watching all of my videos. Thank you. Whereabouts are you? Um, I'm at the Jersey Shore in um, New Jersey, just about about an hour and so minutes south of New York City. Oh, fabulous! Yeah, and I grew fabulous. up. I grew up along the Jersey Shore, and I've continued to live there. Okay. And um, I'm a portrait artist, and when I decided to focus on portraits, I was definitely influenced by the lifestyle of living along the beach with the pretty homes and so forth. Yeah. So, you... uh, yeah. So in my nineties, in the 1990s, my husband introduced me to Rush Limbaugh and talk radio. And that kept me company when I was painting my portraits. And um, I felt like as if I was learning about what was going on in the world. Um, but I have to mention that during the Obama administration, I was, um, focused in more on social media and the internet. And I caught a podcast called Everything is a Rich Man's Trick. Have you heard of it? Yes, I have. Well, that was a red pill moment for me because it wasn't about the Democrats. It was about the people I had voted for. And I was stunned and um, horrified actually. Um, and um, I'm a, um, besides raised in a Republican home, I'm a Catholic, and in uh, 2013, um, Bergoglio was um, inducted into the Vatican seat, and um, I knew also that he was he he was a, a, a snake, quite frankly, and I was feeling very um, very uh, concerned about where the world was going. Um, in 2016, President Trump, Donald J. Trump, um, ran for president, and um, during the first debate with the other candidates. As soon as he started to speak, it was like a dark, it was like a beautiful sun uh, beam broke through the dark clouds and it landed on his head and shoulders. And I said, oh, he's the one. And as we know, millions of other people responded in the same way. Yep. So thank God he was elected president. In the first year of his administration, I, felt I was understanding what was going on in the world and the policies that were benefiting everybody. Um, but then Q came out. And um, in January, I was a little slow on the uptake on Q, but in January, I just happened to say, well, let me give it a shot. And I started to listen to podcasts, particularly The War Drummer. And um, that was truly an Alice in Wonderland experience of dropping down the rabbit hole. And I realized that we didn't know anything about what, what was really going on in the world, but we were suddenly invited into understanding a five-dimensional game of chess. And um, 
I started, I was gripped by it. I always loved mysteries and conspiracies and all of that. And this was like everything I could have hoped for, but it was real. Um, I noticed that there was frequent references to President Kennedy and his son, John. Um, I didn't understand the relevance of it, but a little bit by little bit, there was a strange story about perhaps an explosive attached to John's plane. And then one day there was a cue drop and it said, you won't believe or you wouldn't believe who is talking to you here. And I thought about that in the age of Twitter and social media, nobody would surprise me of talking to me except someone who was greatly loved and well-known who we thought was dead. And I said, it's John. And at the same time, and I don't think it was a coincidence, there was a um, Facebook site that popped up called, Are They Alive? John F. Kennedy and Carolyn Pissett and family. And I joined it. And on that site, I started to review beautiful pictures of John and Carolyn back in New York City, back in the days, you know, when New York was New York. And so many things had changed and I, I, I longed for those days and I longed for them. Um, and so on that site, I shared a story that I'd like to take a few minutes and share with you. When I was a student at the Rhode Island School of Design in 1979, on a beautiful October morning, I decided I would go over to the Brown Library with my art books and I would study and maybe I'd meet some nice brown people and maybe I'd meet a nice brown guy, you know, being in college. And um, I, I slipped into the first seat by the first table by the door and something caught my eye. It was striking. And I turned around to look and it was John F. Kennedy Jr. sitting but six feet away from me. And Charlie, he was so handsome. His feet were up on the library table and he had a newspaper spread out like he was an executive. And my mind froze. And all I could think of was two things, that I wasn't beautiful enough for John and that I was a Republican, which is totally silly, but that was what I was thinking. And I turned away and put my nose in my art books and a few minutes later, I thought, I'm gonna get a peek of him again. And I looked and he was gone. And my heart sunk to my stomach. And then a year later to the day, I did the same thing. I went over to Brown. It was the beginning of a new year. I thought I might meet some new Brown people, maybe a great Brown guy. And I sat at the same, same chair, same table. Something caught my eye in the same way. It was like right out of the movie Groundhog's Day. And it was John and he was sitting in the same table. He was wearing the same clothes and with a newspaper. And I thought the same thing and I turned away. And um, when I looked up again, he was gone. So 40 years later, when I'm thinking he's gone for 20 years, I had such a bitter desire that I had just said, hi, John, just hi, John. And I had it. So I shared my story on Are They Alive? And it was posted. And um, there were some nice comments, but there were two men who got the biggest belly laugh about my sad tale. And one was Franz Klaus, and the other one was a very mysterious man named Bruno Martin. And I friended both of them. I thought they are so funny and they are so smart. I have to friend them. And Franz um, responded, and he accepted my friend request. And shortly after, we began to communicate over chat on Facebook. And I asked Franz, I said, you know, I'm really going to be very, very upset if John and Carolyn are not alive. What do you think, Franz? You're savvy, you're, you're intelligent, what do you think? And Franz said, I believe they are. They're flying with some very high spirited souls. And I thanked him. And shortly afterwards, we got into a more deeper chat. And I shared with Franz, I said, if this is true about John, his life is like, it parallels Moses in the Old Testament, a prince born into a dangerous circumstances, needing to flee into like the desert of an anonymity. And I said, he has a mission from God. This is like very this is a very deep situation that we're that we have here. 
And he agreed. And I said, you know, maybe I should paint that painting of John as Moses. And he said, you should. And because he thought I should, I did. And so I began my first painting. Now, I don't know if we should share the screen and I could then show you my first painting. Please do. Okay. Please do. Okay, so I'm going to share. I'm going to go to, the, I'm not very good with computers. Hold on. Um, oh, golly. So if I share the screen, I share here. Painting That's it. Of John. I wanted to connect John with the whole movement of Q. Yeah, so I can I say John, that. Yeah, so I had John peering out from Q and peering out like when he was a little boy peering out from the from the clock, from the little door of his father's desk in the in the Oval Office, and then I repeated the um, the feeling or the light of Q in the light on his face, and then in the shapes of the waves coming up, and yeah. we see President and and there are seventeen stars, and it's really you know it's not an overly complicated scene. Uh, Franz worked with me on all of these seven paintings. Um, and he was so helpful when I got to the point of, does it look like John? He would give me some, yes, it's good. And then as I got better, he said, oh yes, that's excellent. So um, I painted that painting of John. And now I'm gonna, now I'll get out of that, try to get out of that. And then, um, okay, so then um, I was expecting John to, to show up that that was in the summer of 2018. And I was expecting John to show up. I'm looking for the next one I did. Here we go. Um, to show up on July 4th, 1999, 20 years to the day. And he did not, but I, I was convinced that I was convinced that John was alive by this point. And as, two, as, 2000, as 2019 um, came to a close and I'm looking towards the future, I said to myself, oh, there's talk about Mount Rushmore, a big event. That is definitely going to be where John is going to reveal. And I thought I need to have that painting painted. So then in December or so of 2019, I painted this picture. And it's a scene of Mount Rushmore. And it's a little illustrative. I wanted to tell the story of President Kennedy um, and then the funeral. And then with the spirit of his father still guiding the steps of his son, John. And then in the middle, we see that plane descending. And there's John and Caroline and um, the dog Friday that was talked about uh, because this, this plane crash happened on a Friday and there's Lauren and Friday is looking up to uh, make America great, the sign, the rally sign, which is over President Trump's heart. And then it leads us up to Q and now Q is not a fiery flame, but it's, it's a wistful cloud and it has the dove of peace in it. And then to the very bottom left, we see these odd characters who we now know is Vincent Fusca. And um, these were picked out of the Trump rallies where I believe John and Carolyn and at least three of their children were participating in. And in the very right corner is John's cousin, Anthony Razowell, who the world believed died from cancer in 1999, but I believe he didn't. And so he's like a participant watching this whole scene. And as we know, because I, I thought for surely John was going to be revealed on, the, um, 20, uh, on July 4th, 2020, but he did not. Well, that didn't, that didn't um, disappoint me, but let me just share my next painting. Um, after that was done, and actually before it was completed, I had an idea to paint a third painting of John, but I didn't want this one to be as um, illustrative. I wanted it to be of the spirit of John. And so I work, I work with a, the most brilliant 
design storyteller mentor named Don Victor Vargas. And I was fortunate enough to meet him also over Facebook. And so I said, we, we, we begin in a conversation and then we start to develop the painting, the image. And I said to Don Victor, I want to paint a painting of John, but I want it to be of his spirit, uh, more abstract. And so we, uh, Don Victor did the majority of the designing of this, but in our conversation, uh, we decided we wanted to paint something of a statue, but made up of different pieces of stone, like the way um, people sometimes uh, put stones on top of another, sometimes that's done on a trail to show which trail, which direction you're going to. Um, it's also biblically, um, it's sound because each of us are like a unique piece of stone. We're not made, we're not a brick man-made, we're made by God uniquely, but together we make up the family of man. And so we place this statue um, along a coast like Cape Cod, uh, where the plane on a, um, they say a foggy night descended. And it is a story about from the heart of John, um, the shoulders are slightly bent over and it has a humble countenance. Um, he's directing us to calmer shores um, from darkness to light. And mm -hmm. at the bottom is where we go one, we go all, and it's crudely carved into the statue. Um, and um, this, this painting is six feet tall. All these paintings are bold statements. Um, and so it was kind of, I really was trying to get a feeling of like, almost like this is John standing in front of you, his spirit. So I have um, insomnia and every night when I'm trying to sleep, I'm actually listening to podcasts. And I was very excited to have completed three paintings about John. I had no intention of painting any other, whoops, that's not the one, of painting any other painting after that. But in the middle of the night, I was listening to Dave of X-22 report. And, yeah. this is in, and this is in, I think around May, 2020. And Dave mentioned you know, there's a trump card and no one knows what the, the trump card is. And I thought, well, I know what the trump card is. And if he's talking about a trump card, by golly, I'm going to paint that trump card. And the next day I began this, this, this painting. And um, so this, I looked into um, trump card designs and then I began my research of what would be on the trump card. And I developed this John Jack of Hearts card because John is a man who I believe he sacrificed, did a very strange thing, um, abandoned his life to work on, to save his life, but also to work with Q. And so on this Trump card is President Trump and then Admiral Rogers, who is pointing up towards Trump, who went to the Trump Towers to inform President Trump he was being spied on. And below is General Rogers and his face is painted a little bit red, like, you know, high blood pressure and his mouth is sealed. And then we have um, Caroline and then Andrew Breitbart, who if he's not alive, I think he was assassinated because he had information on the um, on the sex trafficking and pedophilia of Washington. That's what I think. And then, and, um, and then we had John Perry Barlow and John Perry was, Perry was a mentor to John. And for some reason he was mentioned in Q Post and then Julian Assange. And um, Franz worked with me on all these paintings and it was Franz who said, gee, there are a lot of men. What about Caroline, Carolyn at the bottom? And I love that she is part of this painting and she certainly deserves to be. Um, and so I painted, I painted this one and I inserted into it certain things that were relevant to Q. So there's the Punisher and there's the Q clock, which I painted Tiffany blue because Tiffany blue is a very important part of the story. And we have little bits of cues and we, had, we have red pills and we have Peppy the frog. So, 
I, paint, I worked on this and was very excited to get this done uh, shortly before July 4th when I thought John would come out at Mount Rushmore. And of course he didn't. The Great Pumpkin did not return on that day, but I wasn't discouraged. Um, and so every day, as I do, I would check into Facebook. And a little bit after, in July, after July 4th, Anthony, Anthony Perkins, who I suspect is Anthony Razowell, um, who started that group, he dropped, a, he dropped a post and he asked the question, um, could Princess Di and Dodi Fayed had faked their death? And I thought, you know, it's really possible. It's, it wouldn't surprise me at all. I was learning and I was believing more and more that the royal family was involved in the most hideous crimes against children, against humanity. And I thought she must know about it. And I said, yeah. I said, I'm going to take a chance. I think I have to paint that Queen of Hearts trump card. And so I, I meet, that day, I began to research uh, Queen of Heart cards. And I came upon a beautiful old English playing card. I loved the coloring. And I loved the way the crown was sliding off the Queen's head. I thought that said something. And so then I did other research and I came upon, I mean, thank God all these people I had to paint were so well photographed. I had a lot to, to select from. And I found a beautiful picture of Di and she looks like she's slightly hiding behind her hands. And there was a picture of Dodi and he too had his hands and he, as if he's peeking out from it. And then I found a great picture of President Trump and he's got this devilish little grin like he knew a secret and John, and he's looking up to Princess Di. And I had heard they had met a year before at the Carlisle Hotel in New York City. And then I found pictures, moving pictures of Princess Di's two beloved sons, William and Harry. And these were happened to be pictures taken at a memorial of their mother. And I thought about what it must be like for them, no matter what, they had to love dearly their mother and that they would have to come out of the darkness into the light. And so the light playing on their face was meaningful to me. And in the center, like a game board, I found pictures of um, the map of Paris and the route that the car went, and then a diagram of inside the tunnel that the car hit the 13th column. And then there is the, um, the flame, I think it's the flame of liberty. And I thought, well, these would be beautiful to represent the mystery of this event. And God willing, I hope, and I think they are, I think they're alive. And so this would be a wonderful trump card, part of the mystery of what is going on in Q and during Trump's um, presidential administration. So Charlie, I was done with this card and I was really excited about that when uh, I had begun to listen to you, my friend. And in the middle of the night in August, you shared, you shared something very, very, very intriguing. And I love the way you tell your stories and the way you communicate is so, so relaxing for me in the middle of the night when I can't sleep. You know, some, some podcasts are really driven, you know, but you are a joy to listen to. And one night in August, Charlie, you were laughing uh, and laughing about this friendship between Donald Trump and Putin and about a special alliance between these four leaders, Trump, Putin, Xi, and Modi of India. And what you had to say really inspired me. And I said that in the middle of the night, I said, I have to paint that card, the King of Hearts. And there's a lot in this card that I learned from you. You were talking about how they were going to take down 
the world economy um, with this uh, virus. And so you can see to the right of Trump, like the stock market declining, you know, the, the pressures of what's going on e economically. And countering that, I have Trump in a, in a hand signal of victory. And no matter what he knows, we're going to ascend, we're going to rise above. And around the unborn children in the hearts is little coronavirus. So this is, this is a, in the background of what all of these four global leaders were doing. We were dealing with economic issues. We were dealing with a global lockdown. Um, then if we were to look at Putin, you know, he, I would never want to play a chess game against Putin. I think I could enjoy a chess game with anyone else, but Putin, he would intimidate me. And so I, I decided on this particular image of Putin, the way I imagine he must be over in Russia. And, um, and I included that famous soccer ball and on it is the um, molecular structure of adrenochrome, um, which is such an important part of this story. And we have um, a, a Russian Orthodox church and above that, the uh, banner, it says, in God we trust. Um, I also, I'm trying to think about all the different things I did, but I wanted to give a feeling of like in a 24 hour day, we have different light. We have that maybe the, the, the darkness in China, uh, and then we have the gray light of Russia. And then at the bottom, the bright heat of, and, and light of India. And to the right with Xi, you happen to mention, Charlie, that communist China is going to have a new flag someday. So while I have the flags of America, Russia, and India, there is not the communist flag in China. But what is there is this spirit of freedom that the American flag symbolizes, and it's flowing into China. And I picked a, a pergola. Um, a Chinese pergola, because I wanted to be have a, a structure that would be like you could walk through. It wasn't closed down. It wasn't shut. There was a feeling of openness. And um, Xi's attitude was one of applause. You know, so many of us in China, we fear China. I have. We, we're thinking the communist Chinese are our global, are our biggest global enemy. But in fact, as I've learned, it is the elites who were controlling communist China and North Korea. It is not Xi. And I believe he is actually working with Trump to bring freedom to China. And then the bottom, we have Modi. And Modi is um, like reaching out, working along with Modi and uh, Xi and the other um, the other global leaders, but his hand is also reaching up and it's touching like for the first time, the warmth of the sun. And you can imagine what it must be like for a child in a, a prisoner of sex trafficking pedophilia to not to be separated from the sun. And I've heard the horror stories about these dumbs. And so he's reaching up and in the clothing of a uh, of a Trump uh, king, no, of, 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 of a, uh, of a uh, king card, uh, a playing card, is not the, um, uh, what is the, uh, for uh, er Ermi or whatever, what it, it is actually we have children in the warmth of the sun, teenagers who have clothes on and they're jumping for joy because they're free. And in the center connecting these leaders is a chessboard, but it's no longer black and white. It is gold for prosperity and it is Tiffany blue for peace. And you often talk about the global reset. So I use elements in, in playing cards and I have the hand that might be in a playing card and it's resetting the global economy. And I don't understand crypto, but I've heard XRP 
and you might have even referred to it as being the like the linchpin pin in the cryptocurrency as an instrument for global transferring of currency and then it trend, and then it moves to a band of gold of like infinite wealth infinite gold um, in a in a king playing card there is a sword at the bottom and at the top and I changed them to the, the top one, the Bible. And remember President Trump raised a Bible in Washington, DC. And at the bottom is the constitution. No, no, the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights, which is really what every individual human born is deserving of, freedom, pure freedom. And in the hearts on the playing card, they are structured in angle forms, making it more of a cage of protection. They're not a more feminine shape of a heart. They're angular. And in that, um, we have the unborn, because I do believe this horror, this horror, this human sacrifice of abortion will be coming to an end, and it must come to an end. So that's basically what I have in this playing card. And I have to give all the thanks to you, Charlie, because I would never have thought of it um, without all the things that you have spoken about over the last few months that I've been listening to you. And then, you know, I thought I might be about done by that point. But with each of these paintings, I also, you know, showed and I was sharing the process with Franz Klaus, um, a wonderful guy. And I happen to say in kind of a joking matter, not really knowing what it might look like, I said, you know, I need to do a Vincent Fusca playing card. And he said to me, will you really do a Vincent, Vincent Fusca playing card? And I said, yeah, I gotta, I gotta take that hill. I have to do it. So this was the seventh uh, Q um, painting, but the fourth Trump card. And I decided on the Jack of Clubs. You know, I did a little research into what the symbols of all the, of all the cards meant. And the clubs was like, it means a secret society. And I said, yeah, you know, the players of Vincent Fusca, that's a special club. And from the research, that I've done and from other people discussing it over the internet, I came up with the, um, let me see, I think it's one, two, three, four, five different players of people who I believe have pretended to be Vincent Fusca because their, their image, they, they changed in height and even body shape. And the primary one would be John F. Kennedy. Um, and then um, there was Anthony Razowell, his cousin, and then Dodi Fayed, and John Denver, the musician who we thought died also in a plane crash in 1997, and then Isaac Happy, who was an American actor who, um, who the world thought jumped from a bridge and committed suicide. And I... Um, I painted the painting mostly in black and white because so much of Q is talking about everything being a movie and get your popcorn. And um, there's, you know, there, there's a mystery going on here. And of course I had to add the, tr the famous Trump mobile and the Capitol and the rallies because really that's what's happening in real life. You know, these rallies and people gathering before the Capitol. And then these are the players in this myster mysterious movie. And I added um, the rabbit because, you know, to go to follow Q is jumping, is, is exploring a mystery. It's going down a rabbit hole. And for me also rabbits, um, for me anyway, they relate to the innocence of the children who have been forgotten about. Um, and I have the popcorn coming down falling as if we're sitting in front of a great um, movie screen, a big movie screen, and this is the movie. So 
these were my seven paintings, Charlie, and um, they were, I never thought I'd be painting anything political. My work was focused in, on children and happy scenes of family life, um, you know, something very different from this, but I'm very proud that I was able to participate in this unique, amazing biblical time of Q and President Trump. And while John has not revealed yet, um, I believe that he will reveal. And um, that's the work. And I appreciate so much that you, I'm, I'm going to stop share, Charlie. Is that okay? Is that yeah. Okay. They're absolutely beautiful. I mean, um, what a privilege to, to go through all of those. Uh, they're absolutely incredible. They're stunning. Well, Charlie, I have to mention, um, I did all this work with the most wonderful man that I met also through Facebook. His name is Don Victor Vargas, and he heads up the Academy of Composition. And I was actually thinking about giving up on art because I had so many doubts about what I was doing because I don't believe art since modern art came into the culture. I don't believe the training of art has been done properly. It's kind of like the common core of, of our times. And uh, Don Victor for the last 20, 30 years has studied design the way the masters, the way the masters designed and storytelling, which is mm -hmm. why Norman Rockwell's work is so loved even today. He was taught by people who were taught by the masters going back you know, a long time. And each of these paintings, they hold together as a piece of art because of design, because design is king. Mm -hmm. And so my gratitude goes to Don Victor. And I really want to um, encourage any artist who wants to understand and win at art to contact him and to study with him. I don't want to be the only lucky person. Um, and that's that's really the story. That's absolutely beautiful. I mean, for, well, at this moment in time, it's, I love having the diversity on my show. And with your talent and the beautiful pictures that you've done, that's what it adds to, to create such a beautiful picture of what we're going through right now. Um, and just so you know, I've been told I've got to keep very quiet about certain things right now. So this is a, an absolutely perfect distraction um, to take us away into the artistic world of what's happening. And you're absolutely right. The, the only thing I was going to say to you, which is a little bit of, I try and base everything I do on fact, but somebody gave me a great conspiracy theory the other day, and I thought, I wonder if it's true or not. And that was that Donald Trump divorced Melania a few years ago, and the one he's with now is actually Princess Diana in a, in a mask. You know, it's so funny. I heard that, but I think it must be very silly. I think they, I think Melania and Donald Trump love each other tremendously. I think so. I'm not, I'm not going to paint that Trump part. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that might be the joker. <laughs> <laughs> but no, these, when you, the thing is, is like when you're on this journey, I've tried as much as I can to focus on the truth. But when you get stuff like that come up, it does put a smile on your face. Um, when people come up with uh, random um, conspiracy theories, and one of the most in, one of the most important things on this whole journey is is to learn how to smile again and learn how to laugh again because all of these people that are wearing a mask walking around at the moment they're missing out on the beauty of a smile, and that's what inspires each and every one of us every day. Um, oh, I. I Charlie, I agree. I never, and I'm not a scientist, I never understood the belief that a mask would protect you from a virus. No. I was, I, 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 there is a food store in my area where I can shop for food and I don't wear a mask when I go in. And over the summertime, um, I was approached by some people challenged and one woman yelled at me in the aisle. She said, you're not wearing a mask. And I said, no, I don't believe in masks. I don't believe um, they help you. In fact, I think they, affect, they hurt your immune system. And she said, you have to wear a mask. And I said, you must be a Biden supporter. And she ran away. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And it's, it's the left wing, the extremists. The one thing that I'm very interested in is that I've, I've done a lot of research behind the scenes. And at the 2020 election, Donald Trump didn't just win the election. He won by such a massive majority, he turned every single state red. Yes. 80% of the vote he took in America, 80%. Yes. And when you consider states like California being turned red and New York being turned red, it shows you how these minorities have learned to use their big mouth because they are in the minority and yet they're shouting and screaming that we're the winner. Uh, and you're not the winner at all. And the one thing I, I've learned through my study of Donald Trump is, is if you try and steal from him, he won't get mad, but he will get even. And it will take. It may take time. And the time you need to worry is when he goes quiet. And for the last few days, um, he, he, just remember, he's never conceded. He's never stood down as president. Oh, that has kept us all together. We know we have a wartime leader. And we do. And he's often referred to as Patton. And there is that spirit of, of no, we're, you're not going to get, get past me. Um, I think I he's just taken a four-month, 120-day golfing holiday at mar lago uh, Charlie, I've heard that because he's quiet, the deep state is shaking in their, in their boots. There is, so I think there is much, much going on. I can um, assure you there is. And I, and I, and I, you know, I'm always hoping and I'm, and I'm often saying, oh, that date, something's going to happen. Um, but um, just what's going on in Washington, D.C., the digging and the, the smoke that's coming out of, I don't know what, um, manhole covers. Uh, there are huge things going on and thank God for it. Could I just mention that I have, um, on the screen, there's written um, trumpqart.com, and that's where prints can be um, found. And trumpqart.store is where um, t-shirts and mugs can be found if anyone is interested um, in, the, in the paintings I did, um, they're available. And I'll put the links in down below. Oh, thank you. So people can put it on. So if you can send that across to us, to our team, I'll make sure that they put the links in below the video so that people can connect with you. Because they're beautiful. I love them. I think they're fabulous. Thank you. Well, you may be inspiring another Trump party. I have a couple more ideas, and one might be including you, Charlie. Oh, that'd be very, very kind. I'd be very, very honored. Um, it's, it's an amazing journey. Um, it's been an exciting journey because it didn't take the route I thought it was going to take, but I'm, I'm very, very confident in everything that's going on right now. And every time something takes a bit longer, it becomes very, very clear as to why. And I'll, I'll point out one particular thing that happened. Uh, most people know about the Supreme Court. Well, I did a bit of study and I realized that the, uh, the, the Supreme Court, the pennies dropped with them. They have no standing. Because of the simple fact the corporation of the United States of America has been dissolved. So without that, they, they have no official power. So they have not been able to hear the case because they have no standing. Well, but, isn't that amazing? I had never understood like the cause and effect of the, the corporation being dissolved and how it would affect the Supreme Court. That's perfect. And I suppose that's why it has to uh, go to the military. And the, if you look at the... The case that's going to go to the military, it's not from Donald Trump. It's from the people of the United States of America to the chief of the military. They're requesting that it be heard in a military tribunal as the others have no standing and have, uh, have been contaminated. Wow. So we're, we're in an amazing time. We, we really are. And... Um... Charlie, do you believe the, I'm looking forward to med beds. Um, yeah. And I particularly, I mean, for all the children who have suffered so much and also for the children who are affected by vaccinations. 
Yeah. And some of them are young adults. I have two nephews whose lives I believe have been ruined by vaccinations. And I have a very dear friend named Charlie, um, who I believe was probably affected by a vaccination. Do you think the med beds are going to correct that? I know they are. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Um, if they can repair limbs, they can certainly rid the body of any um, awful contaminants that have been put into some of these vaccinations. Um, but that side of it is is we need to we need to be patient with that. It's going to come very very soon, but the it'll be very interesting to see the rollout of that. Yeah, um, there'll be a lot of people waiting in line for it. A great yeah. yeah, I know, Charlie. By the way, I love your son, Justin. Yeah, he's a, he's a complete blessing. He's a he's such a sweetheart, and I love your new studio. I'm pleased with it. Uh, I had to do it because when I was doing it in my little shed, my neighbours kept complaining that I was waking them up in the middle of the night. So we found a space underneath the house that we've turned into a into a studio, and we're very, very pleased with it to such an extent that Justin has set up his uh, a desk in here so he can do his homework because he likes it so much. Oh, that's so sweet. You know, yeah. I love your friends Mel, Kay, and Nicholas, um, and Simon. Talking to Mel in about 15 minutes. Well, please give her my regards. She has a brilliant mind. It's like a computer. And, She's adorable. Uh, I'm hoping someday, Charlie, um, we will all be on a Mediterranean cruise with you and Mel and Nicholas. Um, I think we could fill up the entire cruise ship uh, with all of your fans. And I want to be on that ship. <laughs> well, we're planning on something similar to that, where we're going to get everybody together after this um, in America at a little hotel called Mar Lago in Florida. Oh, my gosh. That's the plan. And we're planning to have a three-day event where we get together on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and bring everybody that's helped through this journey together. Yes. And from my point of view, to say thank you to everybody for their help and support and uh, it's been, it's been, it, it still is an amazing journey, but what a great bunch of people we've been blessed to link with. It, it's true. I, um, I thrive on the ability to connect to all of you. It's, it's been great. And I thank you so much. I thank you so much for inviting me to your show. Um, if you ever have any special um, conspiracy theory, Trump card, shoot me an email. Um, I would love your thoughts. No, you've, you've hit the main one, which was uh, JFK Jr. And there's so many signs. There's so many, you know, JFK Jr., Michael Jackson. I think anyone who knows Michael Jackson or knows anything about being a father knows that he was never a paedophile. He was used um, to try and point the finger at him to divert from the real paedophiles that were behind the scenes. But I know as a father and a grandfather, that he had his childhood stolen without a shadow of a doubt because he was on stage all the time. But I'm 60 years old and I still get up a climbing frame to impress Justin at 60. So playing with and playing with the playing games with kids I keep she young um, and active. When I got to the top of the climbing frame, which was easy, um, it was a lot easier than trying to get down, I can assure you, but it was a lot of fun. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. But uh, thank you so much for sharing that because your 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 work is you you're a very talented young lady. I mean, phenomenal work, beautiful work. Thank you so much, Charlie. I and love you. I love your family, and uh, I love your audience because I feel like we are all one family. We certainly are. Thank you so so much for that. That was an absolutely wonderful time, Donna. Thank th thanks a million. See you soon on the internet. Bye bye. Yeah, well, cheers. Bye. Thank you.